Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to part two of the Novelty Machine Restorations. And in this episode, I basically wanna get all of the sanding done on all of these units all at once. And I don't think it's gonna take real long, but uh, I thought we would just plow through that first um, because we kinda need to prep all these cabinets before we can paint them and do anything else. So let's get the sanding done. And yes, we're actually out on my apartment balcony which is actually right above the garage, so you may hear cars and, and people walking around, but I, I wanted to do this out here because, you know, keep in mind, I, I do live in an apartment, and like when I did my Marl Madness, I thought I could be, you know, very, very clever and line up, uh, you know, these clear plastic sheets all throughout the room, and basically the the dust still found ways to get on everything. So long story short, I vowed never to do that again. So we're out here, it's, it's April Fools and the weather I swear uh, played a joke because it's only 30 degrees out here right now. It's pretty darn cold and it kind of pisses me off because the last few days have been in like the 50s and 60s. So not the most ideal, but I thought we would do it anyways because I want to get most of this stuff done over the weekend. So anyways, let's get the sanding done. And I've got, this is the personality analyzer cabinet that you, you saw in the first part. And uh, I think I'm gonna take my orbital sander and just you start with 80 grit because it's a little bit rougher. I don't think it's gonna take much to take this coat off. I was gonna start with uh, 120 and I did a little test and 120 works, but it's a lot more effort. So I'm gonna start with 80 grit and, uh, and yeah, let's just get the sanding all, all set and, and uh, just, you know, zip through it. So I'm gonna grab a different uh, lens so that you guys can actually see this and uh, we'll go from there.
All right, we are done. Um, the finish came off actually pretty easily. The um, the only tricky parts were, you know, some of these in-between areas where I had to manually uh, go through with hand sanding. But for the most part, this all came off fairly easily. And, and I think that 80 grit was just fine because um, this really is smooth. It's It's almost like if you had sanded something with like 220 or higher. But, you know, again, that's just because it, it's, you know, steel. So, or, or is this aluminum? It's probably aluminum, <laughs> but it's metal nonetheless. And so that made a huge difference. On the back and on the bottom, I didn't go overboard. I didn't, I wasn't concerned with getting it all the way down to the metal, like on, you know, the face of the unit, because you're not gonna see any of this. I just want to get it nice and smooth so that there's a there's an even finish when we prime and paint it but you know for the most part you're not going to see this so i'm not too concerned with that i just want it smooth so anyways that's one down we got uh what three three left to do and uh so i'm just going to do those off camera and uh we'll come back when i'm finished with those okay so all of these are now sanded i got i actually did five i didn't do just the four, I figured, you know, what's the harm in having one extra, just in case, you know, for whatever reason, there's a curve ball and I need a different <laughs> cabinet or decide that one painted better than the other. So I did five and uh, it's actually the next day. Uh, it got to be too late last night to the point where I was actually concerned about getting a noise violation because the sanding makes so much noise and, you know, having nearby neighbors living in an apartment complex, I decided to, uh, ended after the first one and then today I did the other four um, and of course today just like yesterday it was a scorching 35 degrees outside so not exactly the most pleasant uh, working conditions but you know it, it's okay because I'm not in in the right uh, place to start painting these so what I want to do next is actually before I, I get into that um, I know I mentioned this already but the the trickiest parts with with sanding these was getting uh you know these real tight areas and i had to hand sand a lot of it um like this this part here uh this part here that's that's right up next to the hinge and then uh and this unit this is the the love tester there's this i don't know how well you can see it but there's this inside this little recessed area where the plate sits and with these rounded corners it was really really difficult to get in there and i did a lot of hand sanding i got most of it but the corners aren't as as knocked down as the rest of it it's all smooth but i didn't quite get the corners down to the bare metal but i kind of I, I quit there because you're not going to see this you're not going to notice this because a plate's going to go over that so i i just kind of you know i i did a once over and didn't get as meticulous as the rest of the cabinet. So uh, the other thing that you'll notice is on these three units, I didn't sand down the fronts, at, at least not with the orbital sander. And of course, the reason for that is that we've got these CompuVen logos on these three units. So what I did was, and you didn't, I didn't record this, but I, I uh, hand sanded around the logo uh, very lightly just to get it nice and smooth and to be fair the fronts on these have a slight texture and so i i basically i got it smooth to the touch and i'm not too concerned it's it you only notice it around the the copy Ven logo but you know i'm hoping that i can mask this off and then you know just paint over this and since uh, since I did sand it down a little bit, it should be just fine for painting over. So th the next thing I want to do now is actually get everything prepped for painting. And tomorrow it's supposed to be 60 degrees. So it's, it should be much better conditions uh, to paint. And then I'll be doing that out on the balcony. But f for tonight, I, what I want to do is I want to start masking these logos off and also uh, the control panels and uh, possibly the little toppers because those also have the same color as, as these cabinets. And so if I'm painting all these white, I want those to be white rather than that cream color. 
uh, that looks pretty faded. It's pretty ugly. So I think white will look real sharp. And so what I'm going to do now is I'll start with these and then uh, you know, move on to the control panels. And this is going to get real tedious because of the, the tiny little you know, lettering and the little patterns. So this is probably going to be the, one of the more tedious parts of this whole project. And so hopefully everything goes according to plan, but uh, I guess we'll just find out. This is my first time uh, attempting something like this. So let me get set up and let's move on. All right, we are all set up. I've got the three units all lined up here and I'm actually recording this kind of upside down. I've got, um, so hopefully, so hopefully uh, this is, you know, clear enough. You can understand what's, what's going on and this is a better view. Um, so I've got this, this liquid mask. It's, um, and hopefully, I don't know if you can, if you can read this or not, but it's this li liquid masking film. And uh, to give credit where credit's due, um, it, there's a YouTube channel, John's Arcade, uh, John Jacobson is the guy's name, and, and uh, he actually recommends this stuff. He used this on his uh, Pac-Man Cabaret, and it did a really good job of pre preserving the old screen on artwork so he could paint around it. So that's, that's what I'm going to use here. And then I've got a bunch of uh, you know brushes that I picked up from Michael's, which is a, a local hobby store. So I'm hoping that these tiny brushes are, are good enough to you know, get these really tiny sharp edges and, and little areas here. I'm not too concerned about the Enterprise's ink text. I'm probably just gonna do like a line right through that. But for these bigger letters, I should be able, I'm hoping, to mask around that. So let's see here what the instructions say. Um, stir thoroughly before use. Okay, so let me just get a brush out here. El Cheapo brushes. <laughs> okay. All right, I'm just going to stir this up quite a bit. And apparently you can spray this stuff too. I, I, I suppose if you had a larger area. And it says if you're spraying to do three heavy coats. So I'm probably still going to brush on at least a couple, you know, thick coats. But it's going to be a little tricky because these are such tiny areas. It's not like one big surface area. And that says that it should dry within one to two hours. So it, it's going to definitely be a tedious process. Okay, I think that's pretty good. I'm not going to use this brush. This is too too wide but just just for stirring purposes okay now I think starting out I'm going to use these guys here okay well I'll do this one and then you know I'll probably just do these or, or leave the camera rolling and speed it up. But let's get started here. I'm going to actually start on this red line here because that's, that's thicker and I can kind of practice on that one. So I'm just going to come across here. I'm trying to stay within, obviously within the red here, but I'm sure I'll get a little spill off and that's okay. I mean, this isn't going to be perfect. I just want to preserve this as best I can. So if there's a tiny, tiny, you know, beige border around it, I don't think it's going to be real noticeable and it's not going to bother me, I don't think. <laughs> Just trying to get this, I want, you know, this This has kind of a, It's. I'm sure it's tough to see, but this has a little bit of a, of a light, light blue color to it, 
which is good. It's kind of milky, and um, and that's good because I can tell how thick this stuff is, and if I need to apply more of it. This is actually working quite nicely. Okay, we're done. Um, I actually went through and did another pass. I let this dry for about an hour and, and what you see now is actually the second coat. I added another layer just to, just to be safe and add another layer of protection. So I'm gonna let these dry overnight. So I'm gonna move these off to the side and then let's start working on those uh, control panels. So let me do that, we'll be right back. Okay, so here's the control panels that we're gonna be working on. Now, what I wanna do here, well, first off, I've taken all these and basically scrubbed them down, cleaned them as best I could. Using, I used, um, I like to use this stuff called grease lightning. And it's very simple to simple green. So that's what I use. I scrubbed all these guys down as best I could, cleaned them up. And now what I wanna do is actually mask everything around the finger outlines here, because what I wanna do and I don't know how well you can see this, but especially on a couple of these, there's some real spotty paint where with some of these fingers. And I think I can touch that up. And, and with something like this versus like really tiny text, uh, I think I can, I can go through, mask everything out, and then come in with um, some spray paint and very finely go over these areas and just re retouch them up while I'm doing this. So... That's kind of the game plan. These two I don't think are going to be that difficult. This one is a whole nother animal. <laughs> but um, but let's start, we'll start simple. Let's start with this one. And once I get this guy going, 
then I'll just plow through these other two. So let me get set up and let's start with this one. Okay, so I'm gonna use that liquid mask again, but the first thing I wanna do is actually mask off the stuff that isn't really close to the lines. So I'm just gonna use, I've got this uh, frog tape. It's, it's, you know, it's just a masking tape. And uh, cause I, I figure that there's no sense in using that liquid mask on this whole thing. I, I mean, that's just a waste. So uh, you got some cheap tape here. And so I'm just gonna kind of cover all of the areas that aren't real close to the, to the fingers. So let's see here. I think this is gonna work just fine. Um, again, this is the first time I've done something like this, but it seems fairly straightforward. I'm just gonna end up, you know, doing doing a couple light coats of red, and hopefully that'll touch up real nicely. You know, I, I did think about, you know, just taping around the fingers, but I've never really had, I don't know if my technique is crappy or what, but I've never had good luck with getting real clean lines from masking tape. Doesn't matter what kind of paint, painting it is. And I'm sure there's, I'm sure there, there's a, a real technique with that, but I just don't know it <laughs> or, or don't have the experience or the patience or the, you know. So I'm just getting, just getting close, because I, I want to liquid mask around this. Actually, this is a little bit too close. Okay. A couple more pieces here. Okay, now I can start using uh, liquid mask around the rest of this. So, let's see here.
Okay, it's the next day. This stuff has dried. Uh, well, dried is kind of a relative term because it's a little, it's a little rubbery. And I guess that's what you would expect from a liquid mask. So it, you, you can see that it's a little light blue. And uh, so I kind of like that because it verifies that, okay, I, I do have mask where I need it. So I think these are ready to go. Um, I did not, I did not apply mask to this one. I, after I cleaned it up and I was looking at the, at the blue and it looks really good. I mean, there's not really any, you know, spotty areas. So I'm going to leave this one as is. We will have to mask, you know, the outline of the hand when we repaint this and we'll have to do that with these. So I'm going to do that all together, but these are the only two that I felt really needed it. So now that it's the next day and it's really nice outside, let's start painting. And the first thing I want to do is paint these guys. So I'm going to grab some red paint and we'll go outside and let's touch up the paint here and see how well this liquid mask, this liquid mask holds up. So let me go get set up and let's do some painting. All right, we're uh, back out on the balcony. It's um, much nicer, it's about 60 degrees out today, so not that stupid 30 degree weather, but it is quite a bit breezier than, than it has been. So this could get a little bit tricky. I've got a bunch of plastic laid out here, but um, but yeah, it's it's definitely pretty breezy. So let's try to get um, get a couple coats on, on these guys here. I'm gonna do one now and then come back in about half an hour. So just gotta shake up my rattle can here. All right, let's see here. Okay, uh, start about, well, uh, let's see here. Start about 12 inches or so up here. Hopefully this doesn't blow all over the place. Okay, let's do this guy here. Okay. I'm gonna let this sit for, uh, oh, I don't know, a good 30 minutes or so. And then we'll come back and do a second coat. Cause I believe, let's see here, recoat times, apply second coat within one hour, so. Yeah, 30, 45 minutes should be good enough, and then we can just do another coat, so. All right, good. we'll be right back. Okay, it's been uh, a little over half an hour, so I'm just gonna do a light coat here. Um, and we may need to move inside. It, it is pretty, it's gotten actually windier, so. All right. Yeah, I can't even, I can't even spray this, uh, you know, 12 inches away without it blowing off to the side. So, and and my back is actually to the wind, so it, it's got a weird angle. So, anyways, gonna let this dry, and then uh, we'll see where we can go from here with the rest of the painting. Okay, we're back. Um, we're actually in my office area, and as you can see, it looks like a freaking horror movie. Um, I'm not chopping up any bodies, but I've basically got everything lined up in plastic here because I'm going to have to paint in our apartment once again. And the reason for that is I looked at the weather and you know, it was already breezy outside, but um, the weather for the next week is supposed to drop and starting tomorrow is supposed to drop back down into the forties, which absolutely pisses me off because I, I just cannot get one good day out in the sun to do this painting like I hope. So I'm gonna do it inside once again, cause I'm a little impatient. And uh, here's kind of my setup. It's uh, 
it's pretty crazy. So I've got my lights, I've got, um, you know, my eyes and everything that I want to protect covered in plastic. So I'm, my process is I'm going to try to paint towards uh, that closet and I've got that lined in plastic. And then I've got, um, I don't know if you can see, but the uh, cabinet is on a paper bag and it's got handles. It's just a Trader's Joe's bag. And my plan is, is that as I prime one side, I can just twist it at a different angle and then paint the other side. And that way I can paint almost the entire cabinet with the exception of the bottom all at once and get one thin coat of primer on, move that one off to the side and then proceed to do the next cabinet and the next until all five are done. And then I'll, I'll come back and do uh, the bottom. So I'm gonna set up my camera. This is, um, I don't know how well you can see, but I've got a little um, uh, crane here. It's, uh, it's kind of like a, an, a, more of a jib. And that way I can set my camera up and still cover a decent angle without worrying about getting the camera, you know, covered in paint or, you know, in, in terms of like sanding, getting, you know, dust particles on there. So that's kind of my, my plan. And, and I've used this before. You've seen, uh, actually, when I was doing the, the liquid mask, I, I use this all the time because it gives me a good top-down view as I'm working. So anyhow, let me get this camera all set up and we're going to start priming. All right, let's shake this guy up for a good minute here. So I'm gonna to try to do a light coat all the way around this one. And by the time I get the, the backside done, I may do another light coat. Um, so I get two light coats of, of primer on there, we'll see. Um, this stuff says that you can recoat it within an hour, otherwise you have to wait 24 hours. So. I, I, it doesn't say specifically how many minutes, just within an hour, so we'll see how it goes. I don't know if I'll need two light coats of primer or not, but that's kind of the game plan. And then once I'm done with this one, I'll just scoot it off to the side and plop the next one down. So, all right, I think that's pretty good here. And I'm going to try to stay within 12 inches. Now that I don't have so much wind, I should be able to get a nice even coat and not have to get too close to it. So I'm a little worried about those control panels just because I had to get pretty darn close. Like I don't think I was even 10 inches away from it. So we'll see. Hopefully that turned out fine. Okay. Let's go here. And this is gray primer and I chose gray specifically because I want to be able to see when I'm painting the white. So, okay. Oops, shoot. I just knocked the nozzle right off. All right, let's start here. Actually, I'm gonna angle this just a little bit over here. Okay, one thing I just realized I didn't do actually is uh, mask off the inside. But you know what, that's, that's not a problem. You're not gonna see that. So I think I'm just gonna let it be. Now let's see if we can twist this like so. Hopefully you guys can see that. Let me move it out a little bit. Okay, let's keep going. Okay, I'm going to get primer on my fingers, oh well. Let's get the back door here. Let's 
just overlapping strokes. This is going on pretty nice. Okay. Let's see, actually I should also get the top here. You know what? Um, I'm gonna save that for the bottom because then I can get both sides. I don't wanna risk getting overspray that's uneven on the on this, so. Right, and that's right, we got the front. Okay, I think uh, this is about, you know, as, as good as it's gonna get for now. We'll get the top and the bottom, like I said, later. So let me just scoot this one off to the side, if I can. It's starting to stick to the, to the plastic. Now I'm just gonna proceed to do the same thing, so we'll just speed this up. All right, it's been uh, probably hour, hour and a half. I'm just gonna get the top and the bottom of all these real quick. This bottom coat, um, I can tell already I'm going to need to do some light sanding down here. Um, and I can just hand sand that. It, it's just, this is basically just plastic that got torn. I should have actually set this down on a, on a bag like I did with these other ones, but it, it looks a little bit, a little rough around the edges. So I'll probably um, lightly sand that down, but not a big deal. The rest of them look great. So, all right. So, what I want to do now is basically let these sit overnight. Uh, you know, the, the primer is actually really, really dry. It dries really fast, actually. Uh, I mean, it's not tacky at all. If I was really daring, I could probably start painting these tonight, but I want to wait. I'm just going to play it safe, let these sit, and then wait till tomorrow, and then we can start putting our coats of white on, 
And then after the white, I might do some clear coating just to give them an extra layer of protection. But so far, I mean, from what I've gathered, these are the, the primer has dried really nice and smooth. So sanding these down to the bare metal has really paid off already. So I'm hoping that that'll carry over with the white doing real thin coats, you know, maybe like two coats. And uh, hopefully I won't have to do much at all sanding other than, you know, the bottom on this one. So anyways, uh, Let's let these sit overnight and when we come back we can do some painting. Okay, it's the next day and everything is completely dry. Actually, the primer turned out great. It's super smooth. In fact, uh, the only thing that I did was there were two, two of these machines, this one and I believe that one there that had a couple of areas that needed a little bit of light sanding. So I just took, I just hand sanded real lightly the bottom on this one and the top on that one and it didn't even really take hardly any of the primer off so we're all set to start painting these things white and the process that i want to go about doing is basically the same as a primer except that uh, i think i'm going to start like we did before start doing this whole um, midsection basically the majority of it and then flip it on its side after about an hour and then do the top and the bottom. And then when we come back to do the second coat, I'm gonna start on the bottom and the, and the top and then finish with the midsection. That way, these will be sitting like this during the final coat because I'm most concerned about, about this area. The bottom doesn't, doesn't concern me as much. So if, if a little bit of the paint peels off the bottom, you know, not a big deal. And I don't really think it's gonna it's gonna do that because of the way that these dried. They dried just right. Now, I'm not sure. Actually, I need to look at the at the can here. Um, here we go. So, I'm just using uh, Rust Oleum here. This is a, a an actual uh, gloss, uh, oil based. And let's see here. So. Well, let's see for a recoat time. Okay. Dries to touch in two to four hours to handle in five to nine. Da, da, da. Apply a second coat or clear coat within one hour or after 48 hours. So I think the, the plan is going to be we'll do one coat here, you know, the midsection on all these, wait an hour, come back, do the, the top and the bottom, wait an hour, come back and do the top and bottom one more time, wait an hour, come back and do the midsection. So we're gonna, it's gonna be spread out basically across four hours because, or yeah, it'd be four hours. So we should be able to get all the, all the white on. And you know, truth be told, according to this, you could go uh, with, the, with the clear coat within an hour as well. Now, I'm not sure if that's really practical or not. We'll have to see if um, when, when we test the tackiness of, of this, if it's okay to do you know another coat afterwards. But I'll be happy if we just get the white done today. But uh, you know, let, let's give it a go.
All right, here we are. Uh, white paint is done. It's actually, I have to confess, it's been a couple days. Um, I made a big mistake and I tried rushing this a little bit too much and just about everything that could go wrong went wrong. Uh, I had I had the plastic brush up against some of these. I had, you know, stuff tearing off. So ultimately, that first day of, of painting was, I would say at least ha probably half of it was in vain because I had to go through, re-sand this stuff down where uh, pieces tore. It actually, it took me a while to figure out a really good system and ultimately what I ended up using was uh, wax paper over a smaller box than the bottom of these and then I had to do it in two stages. So I would paint the top, let that dry. I would do two coats, let that dry. Then I would flip it over and do the bottom and the back two coats. And that worked really, really well. And of course, letting these dry on these boxes made it real easy to, to pick them off. So I should have really thought this out more than, than racing into it. So lesson learned. <laughs> but, but once I figured that out, these turned out absolutely great. In fact, I barely had to do any fine sanding. I took some 600 grit and really gently went over a couple of areas on these. But for the most part, it turned out really, really good. I'm really happy. So now the next thing I want to do before I clear coat these is we masked off, I don't know how well you can see this, but we masked off the logos on three of these units. The other two don't have them. But um, I want to take that mask off and then if everything goes according to plan and the logo looks, looks well, then, then we'll clear coat this whole thing and protect it all, all together. So that's kind of the game plan. So let me get a different uh, lens on here, get set up, and let's take off these masks. Okay, well, here we are. Um, according to the instructions, you're supposed to use like an X-Acto blade, which I've, I've got here, and just start, you know, making a, a little bit of a peel and then you should be able to, you know, tear it off. So that's kind of what I'm going to do. I think I'm going to start on the V. I don't know how well this will show up, but I'm going to start on the V here because that's black and I'm not as worried about that getting scratch. So this is kind of my guinea pig and I got to say, I am super nervous. I really don't want to screw this up and I really hope that the logo looks good and is protected. I, I mean, that's the ultimate goal. Worst case, yeah, it gets all screwed up and um, I can either, you know, proceed to to sand it down and, and try to touch it up, but I really don't want to go through that hassle. So hopefully this works, but you know, this is the first time doing this, so I don't know what to expect. So anyways, here we go. I'm just gonna try to come in here. Okay, it looks like we got some of it here. Okay, I'm seeing our V. Oh, there we go. Okay, well the good news is the logo itself 
looks looks good. I mean the the actual the black and the red look good. The only downside is that the mask kind of kind of peeled together. Even though I outlined this whole thing, uh, there there is some uh, some of the metal and some of that that creamish um, color around the letter. So. I think what I'm going to try to do next would be to take um, like some, a, a little uh, size hobby jar, you know, like a, like what you'd use for like a model, uh, just a little bit of white and see if I can go around these edges. And uh, I think for that, I'm, I'm not going to use the liquid mask. The liquid mask worked, uh, but you know, now, now I'm going to peel the other two and, and maybe those turned out a little bit better. I, I would say that this is a moderate success, but not completely because I was hoping that I wouldn't have to touch this up. Uh, but you know, not the end of the world, just some, some more tedious business. So anyways, let's move on to the next one. This one came out hmm, pretty close to the same as the other one. Um, again, that that um, even though I outlined these letters, it still wanted to pull the surrounding paint, which is unfortunate. Um, it does add some more work, but but I think I could probably touch this up okay. Um, yeah, I think I'll just have to get some some paint and do some real careful brushing around the edges here, and I. Hopefully that, that turns out okay. So, all right, let's get the last one. All right. Okay, so yeah, not, not terrible, not not quite the result I was hoping for, I yeah. But um, you know, nothing can be more tedious than putting that liquid mask on. So I think touching this up with some white paint will be probably equally tedious, but can't get any worse. Actually, I shouldn't say that; it probably will. <laughs> so I'm going to stop here. Uh, maybe we'll pick up uh, tomorrow, and then I'll take some some white paint and hopefully I can be careful enough to get around all of this. So, all right, well, let me go pick up some paint and we'll touch these up, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs>